Now we're going to start talking about toxic behavior in the professional and business world. Sheree Peterson is my assistant today and she'll be helping me with questions. Too much aggression and work will move what you desire further away. Now often toxic people believe that using toxic behavior gets them what they want. It might, but in the short term, and we're going to discuss that and how it destroys long-term relationships. Toxic leadership has been shown to create systemic ailments in the organizations it is practiced in, limiting or halting its capacity to function. Toxic leaders are those people who strike fear in the hearts of those they lead or who by inflicting pain strip people of their self-esteem through humiliation, constant criticism, dismissive communication, patronizing of others, belittling, berating, the list goes on. As time is spent recovering from these types of mental and emotional abuse, work projects go undone or are slowed down, bringing greater abru abuse from the toxic leader. This creates a pattern of learned helplessness where the victim has the incapacity to think for themselves as they rely solely on the toxic leader for all decisions so as to pacify the leader and stop the pain. So, so often we have these people saying, well, why do they put up with this? Why do, you know, why don't they say something, you know, and people don't understand, most people have tried mm -hmm. and they're, they're stuck. They're in a job maybe that they can't get out of right. for some reason or a relationship that it's just not functional to get out of, friendship or whatever. And so they just start to just do what is asked of them to not have the retaliation anymore. They just don't want to deal with the conflict anymore. Mm -hmm. So I'm just going to do this and get through it. The consequence of using intemperate and callous behavior is that they slow down efficiency and effectiveness, which is not the intended goal of the toxic leader. Mm -hmm. So by relying unwittingly on short-term business wins through the use of emotional and mental abuse, such as cruelty, oppression, bullying, and intimidation, toxic people may not understand that they are ultimately destroying future healthy relational ties with others while jeopardizing the long-term financial functioning of their organization. Mm -hmm. I have some research numbers on that to show you later. Toxic people make the mistake of using abusive tactics to get small wins, but they end up losing the battle. And what is the battle? Keeping healthy long-term relational ties with employees, customers especially, mm -hmm. and other businesses you network with in order to sustain a financially growing business. They might win this battle, but they lose the war. Mm. Often it is not the fault of the toxic leader, but the people who agree to follow them who are the problem. These can be pretty frustrating to deal with. Um, because I've researched and studied this so much, I do pick up on toxic or just negative dysfunctional patterns much quicker than other people. So it can be really frustrating for me to see people get sucked into this charismatic leader yeah. or this person that I know is, you know, is narcissistic in some way. Yeah. And um, so I have to be patient and just like I said, like the one leader, I had to just sit back. She finally picked up on it. Mm -hmm. People eventually figure this out if you give them enough cues, enough indicators. Um, they need help though. Um, the worst thing to do is if you've had, you know, a falling out with this person, you go, okay, I'm not going to talk negatively about them. I'm not going to talk about this to anybody. And so somebody comes up to you and says, wow, what's, what's up with, I can't talk about it. I'm sorry. So this person now goes through the same thing that you just did yeah. because you have not taught them or given them any signals or cues. Now, it's not gossip when you're giving information that is going to protect somebody. Right. It, it's, you might think it's just, well, it's just, it's just uh, emotionally discomfort. It's not like their physical danger is in jeopardy. It is. Mm -hmm. So we're going to have medical findings later in the other segment talking about how this is actually brutally killing your brain and your body and parts of your body and in ways that you don't know are associated with the toxic person. Wow. So it is important to choose leaders who are not emotionally and mentally abusive no matter how successful and charismatic they are in an area. People may be highly skilled, flashy, and knowledgeable in a specific, a specific field, but that does not mean that they are good at building teamwork and inspiring people to get their work done. So is it safe to say that in, say, a business or that type of setting, for employers to look for somebody that maybe doesn't have 
as much enthusiasm as the the person they currently have or, or really would like, but is toxic. I think you mean it's, as charismatic. Yeah. You want somebody with enthusiasm. Yeah, who charismatic. Their work done. Yeah. Um, yes, actually, in the okay. book Good to Great, it's an okay. awesome book that changed this whole field mm -hmm. um, because, you know, a lot of businesses would hire these big flashy people, you know, Lee Iacocca, people mm -hmm. that with big personalities to make their company thrive and, and get the attention that um, they need. Mm -hmm. And what happens when these people who aren't really good at uh, building teams up, they leave the company and they go, see, I was that good because oh. the company's not doing well without me. Oh. Well, in good to great, they said that's wrong. You just left a company unable to lead itself. Oh, You didn't teach anybody to yeah. step into your shoes. You didn't teach anybody to keep this business thriving. It was yeah. all about you, okay? Wow. So you need to look for those people that are hard workers, not necessarily um, charismatic. Charismatic people should be the salespeople for the organization. The front man, fine, they're really good at it, mm -hmm. but they should not be the leaders mm -hmm. of teams. That's good to know. All right, not to say that flashy people can't. Some people have the skill to be both. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about how emotional and mental abuse eventually prevents financial business growth and may even destroy it along with the individuals in the organization. Now this may seem impersonal, mm -hmm. but really this is why you have a business. It's ultimately to take care of people and also you know, to make sure employees get um, money to take care of their families and all these things like that. And we want things. Um, but often bosses are like, I don't wanna just be nice. I want the job done so we can all make money. Right, and that's not But necessary. there's a problem with that. They're not yeah. understanding the, the cycle mm -hmm. of bad health costing more money. We're going to talk about that. All right. Research in multiple fields has shown that emotional breakdowns and deviance due to toxic leadership or toxic coworkers slows down work, halts creativity and productivity, shuts down the flow of shared ideas and motivation, creates a lack of morale, increases office gossip, and fear of communication begins to set in and can create psychological and physical illnesses and disorders in those with susceptibility. Mm -hmm. Now it can create them in people that don't have susceptibility, but <coughs> it definitely <coughs> more likely is if they have the susceptibility, mm -hmm. which, which lead to higher employee turnover, more sick days used, mm -hmm. leave of absence due to increased life-threatening and debilitating diseases, overt and covert sabotage, open and hidden rebellion, dangers to customers and employees on the job site, loss of customers, closing of businesses, and more. Now you would think, how is this you know, dangerous mm -hmm. to customers and employees? There is one company that a manager told me about where um, it was a, a mill where they had wood, and uh, if the employees didn't like the way they were treated, they would throw high price veneer into what they called the hog, into, uh, to be blended up into pulp or whatever for other things. So wow. if that manager didn't make enough money in a certain time from having more veneer and less of the other types of wood, he would get fired. Oh. So it was sabotage going on. And it got dangerous because they started having all night fist fights. It, got, it just got out of control. They had um, certain employees um, who got up and dismantled the cameras because they put in a, like a like hundreds of thousand dollars into this camera system to catch them putting it in the veneer in the log in the yeah. in the hog. Yeah. But um, they had certain smaller individuals that worked there that would get up and dismantle the cameras. Oh wow! Right? So they could get away with it. So okay. it, that company shut down. Uh, yeah. <laughs> All right. Not a successful way to run your business, that's no. for sure. Toxic leaders and coworkers have been described as inflicting others with a pain that strips people of their self-esteem and that disconnects them from their work. Depending on the personality of the employee, they may tend to turn inward or outward with a negative display of behavior that either upsets the work of those around them or prevents them from focusing on their own tasks at hand. Mm. How many times have you ruminated on you know, spent your time trying to recover from something to get some other thing done, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. Toxic leaders justify the means with the end result. They take no notice, nor do they care if the long-term relationship with their followers has been destroyed, mm -hmm. let alone the emotional and mental state of the individual employees they treat disrespectfully. They just want the job done now. 
This type of destructive leadership has been shown to have lasting effects on the organizational culture and productivity levels as followers either spend time recovering from mental and emotional abuse, trying to derail or block their toxic manager's control over them, or lose the desire to do an effective and efficient job. Mm -hmm. Higher deviance, psychological problems, and health problems have all been found to be directly correlated to and caused by toxic behavior in the workplace with an excess of over 200 billion wow. in expenditures being directly tied to deviance alone. Deviance can be described as sabotage, absenteeism, and withholding effort. So you'd think that these things wouldn't be that expensive. I didn't when mm. I started doing the research. I'm like, what is the sick day? Yeah. You know? Yeah. It costs them a lot of money. Oh, yeah. The more powerful the managerial attempts to control, here's a cycle coming on, mm -hmm. the more frustration experienced and the greater potential for even more retaliatory deviance. Mm -hmm. This can be shown in hidden passive aggressive behavior such as gossip in order to receive support and validation for emotional healing. Mm -hmm. Nobody's going to trust that leader anymore. It gets spread so fast. Yeah. Because people need to heal. Also, you know, sometimes you need to warn people. Mm -hmm. I just had this experience. It's not to bag on this person, but you need to understand that this is inappropriate and be careful and watch for it. Yeah. You might not want to work with this person because of this situation that happened. Absolutely. Yeah, that's a good point. Toxic nonprofit leader. All right. This person was hard worker, but in your face guilt tripper. Mm. Harsh judgment. Um, so she would basically call you up and ask you if you did something, you know, that she wanted you to get done. Mm -hmm. Now this is nonprofit. You know, you're a volunteer. Yeah. And she treated you like you were an employee that she could fire. And she was losing volunteers left and right for years. And when I was pulled into the program, I was told immediately, well, you know, you're like the only one that will, you know, accept this position to go work with her. Wow. <laughs> she didn't know that. Yeah. <clears throat> so she started pulling this stuff on me. I kind of like, you know, just mostly just, you know, let it go, let it go, whatever. She's probably the main reason why I went into this because I'm like, I am tired of letting this go. I mm -hmm. need to learn what to say. I mean, this relationship would have been completely different if I'd had these tools. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Right. She, she saw everybody else as failures, not that she was a failure in holding on to them. She wouldn't accept it. She would actually call up. Um, I remember one time I said, well, I think I can get that done by Thursday. She didn't listen to the I think part. So she calls me up on Thursday and says, um, you know, leaves a message and says, did you get that done? So, of course, I went and got it done, then called her back and said, okay, I got it done. And I found out later from somebody else. They said, well, she checked up and knew you hadn't gotten it done. So she thinks you lied. Oh, boy. Right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Just, you know, well, if you were calling that person, why didn't you talk to them? I kind of felt like yeah, that. Yeah, exactly. You know? Exactly. Right. So toxic outbursts can lead to other employees no longer trusting that the aggressor can handle difficulties respectfully, which shuts down the flow of ideas and valuable input, which is necessary to the creative problem-solving think tank mentality needed to help an organization thrive. Mm -hmm. So I'm in this, again, in a nonprofit, um, but it, volunteering for this, you know, to be on this team of people to run events. And I, I was a young adult, you know, I wasn't married yet, and I walk into the room, and I didn't have to be there, it was kind of like my choice. Mm -hmm. So I walk in, and this new leader, um, she's walking in between everybody, you know, instead of sitting at the table. Mm -hmm. And I wasn't able to pick up on this, mm -hmm. now I can pick up on it. You need to do this, you need to do that, you know, in your face, walking around the tables, because it's wow. like a, you know, it's like a, a series of tables in a circle. Uh -huh. And she's just, you know, hounding people, and, and she's like, okay, so we need to do that. And I said, well, I need this, this, and this, and this. And she cuts me off and says, you're going to have to get that information on your own later. Did I go back to that meeting? No. <laughs> no, I didn't. Right. So she's losing volunteers because she's in everyone's face. They, well, they're so incompetent, they won't do what I ask, right? <laughs> and right. a little arrogant. <laughs> yes. Toxic leadership can create a cycle of dysfunction that escalates until the employee is fired, quits, or relents. Relenting may appear to be a positive outcome to the toxic manager, mm -hmm. 
but it is a form of learned helplessness that keeps people from performing to their best ability, ultimately destroying an organization's ability to remain com competitive through collaborative creativity and innovation. Mm. So this is the series that happens with uh, learned helplessness. This happens in, in abuse, spousal abuse, children. You wonder why they don't run away anymore uh, from you know the abuse that they're going through. Why don't they speak up? Mm -hmm. They have been beat down, right? They've been broken. Yes, mm -hmm. they have been. In areas where subordinates under toxic managers work directly with the public, like call centers, that, mal that maltreatment and mistreatment is transferred directly onto subordinates who are currently working the phones with customers, who in turn quickly pick up on the negative or flat tone of the voice and attitude of employees. This translates into a loss of customers, which is felt in a loss of sales. Mm. So um, the manager that I spoke with, Mike Poor on this, Mm -hmm. He talked about how this company, um, I mean, basically, it's, you know, it's all this. This is all they do. So mm -hmm. they're losing all their business. Mm -hmm. And the, they just had to explain to the managers what was happening and oh. why that was happening. And changes started to get made. Good. Uh, disrespect, poor teamwork, and abuse of authority can lead to a 60000 in cost of replacement when an employee just walks out the door because they didn't feel appreciated. And you're like, well, how does that cost $60,000? Mm -hmm. A lot of times, uh, you know, people are hired through agencies. Mm -hmm. Those companies have paid money for that, mm -hmm. okay? That, there's costs in training somebody because then maybe you have to have a temp for a while. That's right. Whatever the reasons, those costs are there. Sprint was recently able to reduce costs by 20 million annually wow. and improve producti productivity by 93% by getting superiors to stop humiliating, belittling, and berating subordinates when they spoke up. That's incredible. <laughs> Employees needed to be able to safely confront problems with their managers. Trust was built as employees became more apt to voice concerns as managers remained rational during tense moments. Mm -hmm. So a medical dilemma was improved when a toxic doctor learned the reason why he should stop talking down to the nurses. What happened is the nurses would speak up during the surgery at certain points and they wanted to be able to, you know, help the patient, mm -hmm. you know, and make sure things were done correctly. A lot of times the surgeons were unwilling. They're just, you know, set in this, don't disturb me type of thing. They had to set up um, a moment where the nurses, a rule where the, this is the moment. Does anybody have any concerns? The nurses could then say their concerns and then it would be addressed, mm. okay? Now there was one doctor who was having trouble with this and not doing it. Now they, were, they didn't really explain, I guess, to them why they were doing this until he didn't understand until he found out that they were losing customers <laughs> and also it was life-threatening in yeah. certain cases because the nurses were more objective seeing you know, what was happening mm -hmm. and, uh, and needed to be able to give input Mm -hmm. So as soon as he understood that, and he also understood that none of the other nurses were going to say anything anymore because the gossip spread. Right. They're now afraid to say anything. Mm -hmm. And so uh, now people aren't going to get the help that they need and people are going to maybe lose their life. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So once he understood what was happening, he didn't even know it spread like that. So once he understood, he made the changes. He actually went to the nurse and apologized because he knew that would spread. Oh, good. <laughs> right? <laughs> And so it was fixed. Good news does spread as well as bad. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's right. <laughs> All right, group think. Now, if you remember Enron a ways back, mm -hmm. um, Enron was a disaster financially, but we're going to talk about why it was a disaster uh, emotionally, which is really the core behind why it, it went down. Mm -hmm. Self-promotion, bullying, and explosive tantrums by leaders at Enron led to a toxic cult-like environment where charismatic leaders severely penalized employees into conformity through shunning, manipulation, coercion, and control. Questioning the status quo was not allowed, creating a groupthink mentality. Mm. I'm not gonna talk about groupthink here, but if you, if you look it up, you can learn about the destructive forces of it. Ultimately, Enron destroyed itself and many other long-standing financial institutions as employees were left disoriented by altering moments of love versus relentless criticism that ate away at their self-esteem. 
these are tactics used for manipulation and brainwashing. Mm -hmm. Okay, they were using brainwashing techniques. Mm -hmm. Their symptoms were akin to battered woman syndrome, acute stress disorder, and PTSD. Wow. These are symptoms usually found in military personnel and those who have lived in hostile and unpredictable environments for far too long. Mm -hmm. Pretty incredible that an organization that's not even military wise yeah. is doing that to its uh, people. Yeah. The toxic leadership trickled down to employee behavior as they began to stab coworkers in the back due to the brutal appraisal system at Enron called Rank and Yank. Okay. To keep your job, you needed to consider kindness and helping others a weakness. You needed to climb up above another to keep your job, okay. basically. This is an example of how toxic leaders can create shark tanks instead of think tanks. Toxic behavior destroys people and organizations when boundaries and controls are not set on emotionally and mental abuse. Mm -hmm. What was interesting, if you go and look up Enron's Code of Ethics, mm -hmm. it talked about how they deplored this type of behavior and wouldn't put up with it. Oh boy. Again, there's no independent, <laughs> um, there's no independent ethics committee mm -hmm. on any organization mm -hmm. at all, except for the BBC, when that has to do with customer uh, relations with oh. the business. There's nothing telling you how you can and cannot treat your employees. You can wow. take them to court, yeah. but there's no outside ethical portion on this. It's interesting, that's true. While these deviant behaviors can be found in healthy organizations as well, they are found to be more prolific in an organization run by toxic leaders. It is important to remove and prevent employees who show signs of toxic leadership from holding key leadership positions, which is vital to setting the standard for how leadership should be done. Often when individuals are given sound reasons for why they should change, such as, a physical safe, such as physical safety in the organization's financial security, like the doctor, mm -hmm. individuals find more meaning and purpose in making those changes than just being told to change in order to make people feel better. Mm. Upper management needs to train managers below them to understand the organizational and financial damage that toxic behavior does. <clears throat> Those who would employ the practice of toxic leadership towards subordinates can be detected if specific symptoms are a recurring and consistent theme with those they work with in general. Now you can go and look at the material I'm going to email to you to get these, you know, the information on these other pictures. Sometimes toxic behavior doesn't mean the boss is toxic, but just that the relationship between specific people is toxic. Certain individuals under specific leaders can also be singled out or treated differently from the typical standard because of a bad relational fit between leader and follower based on personal or cultural differences. Mm -hmm. Such as singular instances, such singular instances can be just as destructive to organizations as toxic leadership on the whole, depending on the level of reaction and deviance. Okay. <clears throat> Although the book, A Child Called It, isn't a business book, Dave Pelzer's life is an example of how abuse can happen to a singular child in a family where all the other children are treated with respect. Bad relational fit at home, school, or work is one thing, but if it escalates to humiliation and shunning, it steps over the line to abuse. Great book to read. I don't know if they've made a movie of it. It would be very difficult to handle. Mm. Um, <clears throat> he has subsequent books that talk about how he's recovered from that. Wow. Becoming aware of the triggers that are leading a group of in, or individual under a leader to resort to deviant behavior is necessary to understanding if toxic leadership is the source or if there is some other factor, such as open rebellion to changes happening within the organization that are not the fault of the blamed leader. So this is a fun little thing down here. That's pretty frustrating to read, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is. Because <laughs> it changed. <Yeah. laughs> people resist change. You don't want to read it like that. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So people resist change. I personally don't struggle with change. I'm excited about change. I don't like things being boring. Yeah. But a lot of people struggle with it. We, as managers, need to be aware of that, mm -hmm. um, of course. But I would suggest um, if you bring in a new leader or manager, uh, to a group and you have done so to incorporate change at that moment, mm -hmm. you just um, made it so that that leader or manager is hated. Right. Right? Yes. Um, that, that manager or leader needs to come in for a certain amount of time to create relationships with, the, with these people and those people need to be a part of the decision-making process or 
kind of the metabolizing of the changes that are going to be coming that they understand are from up above. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Yeah. So I've seen um, leaders uh, put in this situation and it's pretty painful because mm -hmm. they're blamed and they haven't done anything wrong. Mm -hmm. Be careful with clim climate surveys and 360 degree evaluations that may put a leader in a bad light. Consider the leader who is placed in an environment that needs positive change with subordinates that do not want change. Such leaders would most likely receive an unfairly given bad review in these cases. Mm -hmm. Same thing again. So that's why you can't always trust those. Right. Indicators of toxic people often show up when they voice their opinion that making the hard call entails the use of abusive and psychologically damaging behavior in order to get the job done. A good way to spot these types of individuals and not put them in leadership positions again is do they consistently joke around to other managers about the use of humiliation and cruel behavior on subordinates? Mm. Do they tell stories of how they humbled others into submission or taught them a lesson? Dr. Reed, who was a longtime professor at the Army War College, states that a loud, decisive, demanding leader is not necessarily toxic while a leader with a soft voice and facade of sincerity can be toxic. Toxic leadership isn't defined by just a singular incident in which someone is treated disrespectfully or abusively, but is defined by a consistent series of incidences and behaviors that are done with cruelty and an almost sadistic quality. Mm. So we're gonna go into a little bit more of this so you can discern the difference. A leader can be tough on subordinates in an attempt to engender some sort of effort on their part to become more skilled, knowledgeable, or specialized. This type of leadership is done for the subordinates' best interest and does not lead them to despair or seek to lash out with de deviant behavior that destroys group cohesion, as toxic leadership does. Instead, it seeks to push the subordinate to become their best selves. Toxic leaders, on the other hand, seek to push others beneath them in an effort to prove that subordinates are inferior, while the toxic leader touts their selves as all-knowing and all-powerful. Remember the woman in the meeting? Mm -hmm. I knew I could do that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> A level they seek to maintain at all costs in an effort to fulfill their narcissistic needs and or get the job done their way without any input from subordinates. Yeah. This type of leadership destroys any chance of collaborative. <laughs> I know she's <laughs> laughing already at the picture. <laughs> Top down leadership. All right. This type of leadership destroys any chance of collaboration and open communication that can lead to better solutions and positive involvement through a process of shared thinking and pooled skills and resources. The Army made changes over 20 years ago to change from dominating top down leadership to a type of uh, adaptive leadership that has has made them the fastest organization to lower their percentage of toxic leaders. Mm -hmm. The military wants leaders who can pull together the knowledge, skills, and insight from their military units on the ground for faster problem solving instead of waiting around for all the answers from upper military levels. Especially since those military levels have no idea what's going on there. Right. They don't have relationships with the people there. Mm -hmm. they, they have no clue. So they have found that this is much better. Well, it's because they're not in the situation, correct? They're far away or maybe they're just in a completely different area. They're not in the moment. Exactly. Okay. The Army continues to take steps to remove those with toxic leadership tendencies or keep them from taking leadership positions until they are trained and show that they can be trusted to treat their subordinates with respect. Mm -hmm. That would be scary with some people, wouldn't mm -hmm. it? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I can think of a few people. Some people that are jokers or whatever, mm -hmm. you know, I don't know if I would trust them to be there for me. Mm -hmm. Studies by a Dr. Sutton found that one of the highest rates of toxic leadership were found in nurses who reported being verbally abused by physicians 90% of the time. Mm -hmm. However, when I talked to one surgeon, um, he said that uh, a lot of the head nurses were just as toxic to the doctors. Oh, wow. Okay, right? so it goes both so ways. So, yeah, it does. Mm -hmm. Not necessarily the subordinate nurses, mm -hmm. but some of those um, top dog nurses were, were pretty verbally abusive. And this surgeon was, um, I actually asked, he didn't know, I asked one of the nurses, um, uh, about him and they said, oh, he's like one of the nicest surgeons here. Oh, so that's good. I could trust him. <laughs> you could trust him, yeah. <laughs>
As Dr. Reed traveled and lectured, he took his own polls to find out what fields had the highest levels of toxic leaders. He found that about a third to half of military raised their hands, while almost 100% of the audiences who work in the field of banking raised their hands. Wow with other corporate cultures falling somewhere between a third to 85%. I would love to see a study done on this yeah. to get the exact figures. And uh, it was interesting, I was in line to get my master's, I was in, uh, in line with all the business and, and um, MBA students. Mm -hmm. And I was in a new type of degree, um, Master's of Science in Organizational Leadership. Mm -hmm. And they were asking me about it and asking me about my thesis. My thesis was on detoxing corporate America, basically this subject. And um, they said, oh, oh, so who was you know, the most toxic? I said, oh, well, 100% of the banking audience raised their hands. And the guy standing next to me was like, oh, that's so true. Oh, and really? he was in banking. And some people around were like, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. So I, I've never been in banking. Me either. I, I feel no sorry experience. for you. Yeah. <laughs> Get out. <laughs> um, hopefully they can understand uh, Enron and what happened. Yeah. And maybe make some changes. I'm not sure. There's probably a lot of leverage there with, you know, you don't do as I say, you're fired, and there's a lot of money involved. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So therefore you need an outsourced ethics, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, absolutely. Which I would love the government to have, but I think we're already spending enough on government policies. That's but I would true. love to see that someday. Mm -hmm. Businesses need to start protecting their employees' emotional and mental health, not just their physical and financial health. Mm -hmm. But as we have just discussed, all four of those are tied together. Emotionally and mentally healthy workplaces have better physical and financial health. And now we'll go into our next segment on health.